Hey everybody, welcome to a very special episode of Ice Cave Radio. That's right, Doa here, along with Charmer as usual. And today, today, Charmer, well, why is it special? Tell us, tell us why it's so special. What do we have to look forward to today? You can look forward to yes a new card that's right I, I i was getting ready to make that joke and then i was like panicking just before i did it because i was like man i don't know if people are going to be old enough to remember you know the uh the game shows where the you say it in right. that voice yeah i mean i think it's still around it's not like like bob barker isn't hosting it it's like drew carey isn't it now it is drew carey right? but it, the difference though is see i remember that stuff because and God, I'm going to date myself now. Uh, uh -huh. It was one of the few things that was on daytime TV. And that's what my grandma watched. So like when I would spend yeah. time with my yeah. grandma, she would watch it because, you know, back in them uh, days, you had like four channels or whatever. And she had like Stay the push a while button TV. Listen. Yeah. Uh -huh. So like, I know it's still around. It's just, it doesn't have the same um, presence in the cultural zeitgeist as yes. it used to, because yeah. there's just so many options all the time that, like who who cares right i mean like those I were care, kind of but... some of the original uh you know memes if you will the original kind of referential things that everybody sort of knew was like the slogans and game shows and things so yeah. uh yeah i mean it was i watched all that stuff too family feud yeah when i was a kid man but yes we have a, a new card so anyway yeah so <laughs> so uh you get a card you get a card actually no we just have one card to reveal but it is it is a pretty incredible card um and, you know, before before we get there, uh, we could actually, uh, you know, talk about a, a, a cave pole, I suppose. Yeah, we are slowly getting back into the swing of things, which yeah. means we have an actual cave pole of the week. Here's our cave pole. This was a charmer question. What's your lightsaber color? This was inspired by lightsaber Larry in our I was Discord. Gonna say, it was kind yeah. of a lightsaber Larry question. A but... little bit. He gets a double shout out, I guess. And and this is a reminder to all of you patrons out there too. If you have uh, in your patron re Patreon rewards a segment or a show intro that uh, you ca have, there's a, a place to drop those videos now in the uh, Patreon section on the Discord. And if you just want to shout out like lightsaber Larry, that's fine too. Just let me know. Just DM me or DM Charmer. But uh, let's talk about this. What's your lightsaber color? So uh, the thing that surprised me right off the bat is that we actually have a kind of a new color joining the Star yeah. Wars canon here. Shakti's, um, uh, not Shakti. Uh, Shin, Hati. Shin Hati. Yeah, Shakti is like a different uh, card that was revealed before. It's a different Jedi. Yeah. Yeah, but anyway, uh, orange. Interesting. And most people picked orange. I was surprised. Is Do you think it's just because it's the newest color to hit the screen, maybe? It's been around in games and stuff, but we haven't seen it on the screen before. Ahsoka, what do you think? I, I'm i very surprised. So, like, yes, it's new, but I don't think that everyone was picking it because it's new. I think part of it also could be the character. I, I was a bit curious when I was putting this together. I was like, maybe I'll just list the colors. But then there was a part of me that was like, well, what happens if I put like cool characters with it and will that sway things? And uh, let's be honest, like Shin Hadi is a pretty cool character, or at least I think so. So maybe that yeah. also swayed it. Uh, there are also folks like me that, as you mentioned, used to use this color in the games a lot. So whenever sure, yeah. I played any sort of uh, Star Wars game, whether it was, uh, you know, Knights of the Old Republic, Star Wars, the Old Republic, the MMO, etc. If I was ever dual wielding lightsabers, my go to colors were always one purple, one orange, if that was available. Um, and I know a lot of other people that liked orange. So I'm not surprised that it was popular. I'm just surprised that it was first. I would not have picked yeah. this as a winner at all. I was going to guess uh, it would be green. Uh, that is the color that I chose. Uh, I like green because, uh, well, green's my favorite color, but also it's the Qui-Gon Jinn lightsaber. It's the Luke Skywalker Return of the Jedi lightsaber. So in my opinion, mm -hmm. the coolest Jedi and the coolest iteration of Luke Skywalker both use green. So for me, that was an easy choice. Um, did You said you chose orange, though. Did you choose orange or did you choose purple so then? 
I chose purple because okay. whenever I can choose one, I always choose purple. Or if it's mm. like a double sided, then I choose purple. But anytime that I dual wield, orange is my second favorite color. So then I go purple and orange. Those are my two favorite colors. The purple does look cool. It's really hard not to have a lightsaber color look cool. Lightsaber just look cool in every color. It's just how it works. They yeah. really do. So it was a tie really for do. seven votes between blue and purple. So it was orange at 10, green at eight, and then seven and seven for purple, five for yellow. Um, which is like an okay lightsaber color. I think it is kind of like a tier two lightsaber color, in my opinion. Um, white, which is really just Ahsoka. She's the only one I've seen that has a white lightsaber. And then red, only two votes. Actually, white and red were tied, but uh, not a lot of people overtly Sith in this poll in terms of picking the red lightsaber. I, yeah, I will say that's probably the second most stunning thing for me because... Mm -hmm. The Sith characters are historically incredibly popular in Star Wars, and they all share the one lightsaber color. Uh, when I was at Galaxy's Edge and we did the, the lightsaber workshop, there was a lot of people who chose red as their color when you go through that, because that is an option. Yeah. So while I didn't expect it to win, it being last place, tied for last place, is also a bit of a shock to me. I'm not going to lie. Well, there you like, go. If you would have said to me yellow is going to have more than double the votes that red does, I, I would not have believed you. You know, it's it's a decent sample size, but it's not exactly the largest one either. So we'll, we'll chalk it up to that a little bit. But maybe I'd like to think that our Discord is just so pure hearted that they, they yeah. just wanted to choose the lightsabers of the good characters, uh, except for orange, which is kind of the, the you know, middle of the road. Not really good or bad gray Jedi, I think, is uh, or gray Force users is how we would describe Balon and Shin Hati, I think. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. But anyway, there you go. There's a cave pole, which means, Charmer, it's time. It's time to reveal who our spoiler card is and by saying who that kind of gives you a clue right there it is a character we do have a unique character to reveal i'm going to reveal yes. the art right now before we see the card because they showed us the art earlier and the art was awesome i thought so here it is boom there's it and we know exactly who that is right i mean that is an yeah, unmistakable is, clone right there that is, that is steve it is the one right. in the background the mm -hmm. the one that looks like all the way furthest back yeah um kind of like bottom right his name is steve and right. that that's who clearly this artwork is about right, right. not the, the front and center very obvious commander cody the card zooms in on that guy in the background yeah that's that's gonna that was gonna be the curveball <laughs> we were gonna throw you but no it is it is definitely commander cody uh one of the most famous of all clones i would say famously ordering the hit on obi-wan kenobi at the end of uh, revenge of the sith when they're on utapau and all that kind of stuff thought he got him yeah didn't get him he should have you got to check you got to double check those jedi are, are kind of sneaky good thing he didn't though because i kind of would have ruined the rest of the the franchise wouldn't it if they would have actually been able to kill obi-wan kenobi but uh yeah commander cody uh it's you know i've i've read in the lore that later on he sort of has a change of heart you know he had the chip that made him do it with order 66 and all that yeah. Yeah, so let's take a look at the I, actual... I, oh, go ahead. I, feel, oh, I was just going to say, I feel like they really addressed that well because through the Clone Wars, we kind of came to love a lot of the clones and yeah. then obviously forcing them against their will to do something like Order 66 mm -hmm. doesn't sit well with some folks. And then when they did you know, further cause, because Clone Wars got that last season. And so you right. can kind of see them struggling and how Ahsoka gets away and so forth. Uh, I really did like the way that they addressed that. So me too. It, it, it was, that was good. They did a good job of adding, giving depth to, you know, people that were just carbon copies of each other, essentially and literally. Yeah. But let's take a look at the actual card itself. That's what everybody wants to see. And here it is, Clone Commander Cody commanding the 212th. It is a command-only card, so we can put this both in Heroism and Villainy decks. That exci that's exciting right off the bat. Cost 5, ground unit, obviously. Republic Clone Trooper. It's a 4-4 with Overwhelm and Charmer. Get this. Coordinate. Each other friendly unit gets plus 1, plus 1, and gains Overwhelm, which is kind of crazy, right? This is probably one of the strongest like area of effects or a, a side of the yeah. board affecting buffs that we've ever seen in the game. He's slightly understated four, four for a five, but man, that effect is, is strong. This is an uncommon by the way, too. So it's going to be unlimited. You're going to see this guy pop up. Yeah. So I think the immediate comparison that comes to mind, or at least for me mm -hmm. was general Dodonna, right? General Dodonna is somebody who is a four, four, and is meant to 
buff a faction and yeah, rebels yeah and, and it's obviously rebels but then that's it it's it's just the plus one plus one mm. you do get that kind of cost benefit like you were talking about where it's a four uh cost four four as opposed to clone commander cody being a five cost but I'll, I'll be honest, when you first showed this to me and I read it, I was like, oh, yeah, he gives all, all the clones plus one, plus one, and overwhelm. Oh, no. And then I read it again and went, there's <laughs> no faction here. This is not like General Dodonna. Yeah. This is incredible. So, yes, he is understated, but he has a relevant keyword himself. He has three very relevant tags, Republic, Clone, and Trooper. We've seen matter in a number of different ways already. And then that coordinate is kind of a, a powerhouse ability because not only is he buffing everybody else, but he's giving them overwhelm. And I think that is a very underrated keyword at times, especially when you kind of talk about splash damage or chip damage through games. Yeah. And uh, I, I love what we decided to do for this episode because I think we get to highlight some of the cool things about this card in very different ways. Yeah. Spoiler. <laughs> so, well, so let's, let's talk about that real quick here in a, in a second. As we get to our main topic, we just decided to make the whole episode about a reveal rather than do kind of a separate little reveal video. But yeah, again, I, I think, I think this is, I'm trying to think, but I, I believe this is, in my opinion, the strongest board buff in the game right now. It gives a keyword and it gives plus one, plus one. So, if you put this like in uh, in Boba Fett heroism, for instance, uh, giving the keyword of overwhelm also would give them the plus one from Boba Fett if the leader was flipped. So there's all sorts of crazy stuff you can do with this leader. And the fact that it's not locked to heroism or villainy means that it's very versatile. I think we're going to see this pop up in a good amount of decks with command. And speaking of decks, Charmer, that's what we decided to do today. Rather than talk about the usual stuff when you do a reveal card, which is, oh, what cards would this synergize well with? What leaders would this synergize well with? It's a very broad use card. So we thought it would be fun to each build a deck independently that uses Commander, uh, Clone Commander Cody, capitalize on them. Obviously, you know, we're limited by what has been revealed so far, but, you know, I think there's a lot of fun stuff in there already. And so, yeah, we thought we'd just build decks that use Clone Commander Cody. We'll put the list up in front of you and uh, we'll talk about it a little bit. So uh, do you want to talk about, talk about your list uh, first? Uh, I'm fine with talking about mine first. Yeah, absolutely. Right. I'm really excited about it. I so let's do it. I loved it this, this idea and this exercise because, as you said, a lot of times we'd like to just like talk about what kind of cards this works well with. Yeah. But you don't get to necessarily talk through all of the different strategy considerations and, and so forth, right? So... Mm -hmm. I opted to try building a Darth Maul deck. Now, when I saw this card, the two leaders that jumped out at me were Sabine, right? Because Sabine Green is already incredibly popular. Mm -hmm. This is an aggressive card, potentially. It's buffing your team. It's providing overwhelm. But I wanted to do something with a, a newly revealed hero. And the reason that I chose Maul was because I wanted to focus on two things. I already knew that I was playing Command, and I wanted to focus on utilizing Ambush with Commander Cody's ability to give things Overwhelm. Sure. Because when you pair those two together, you can get some really big chunks of incidental damage when you're getting your splash trades. The other reason I wanted to pair it with, with Maul in particular is because, again, if you don't draw Commander Cody, a lot of these units that we're going to C can still also make use of Darth Maul's leader ability as well, where he can grant overwhelm. So fair enough, yeah. Uh, with, with that in mind, uh, on the low end of the curve, we start with Death Star Stormtrooper. It is a very efficient unit for helping to give you coordinate cheaply because it's just one resource. And so if you're trying to turn on Commander Cody, it's going to be helpful. Similarly, when you start talking about overwhelm, you're going to notice a theme here. Almost all of the units I'm running have more attack power than health. And that's by design because you want to take advantage of that overwhelm and a three one for one is a great way to do that. The other one drops that I decided to run in the list were Daring Raid because it's removal, but it can also potentially finish off a base. You know, that damage can go to base and with all that chip damage you're hopefully getting through, that might be relevant. And then three, yeah, that's right, three copies of Timely Intervention. Yes, I'm running wow. Energy Conversion Lab, but again, I wanted the emphasis to be on trying to take advantage of overwhelm and doing so with ambush means that you can really surprise your opponent and 
kind of thinking ahead as well we know that this next set is going to feature a lot of battle droid tokens clone tokens those things do not have a lot of health the battle droid tokens in particular are perfect targets for overwhelm you're oh, yeah. trying to take out a droid and then you also get to get in three or four extra damage that's a pretty big deal uh in the two drop slots because again we want a lot of cheap units here to get coordinate turned on early uh in space i have kylo's tie silencer and the uh, newly revealed or recently revealed Confederate cruiser. Uh, the Korea. TIE Silencer doesn't have a lot of direct synergy. It's just a nice quality 3-2 in space that might give you some incidental value if somebody else decides to discard it from your deck, but yeah, it's sure. mostly just um, you want to you want first turn play. It's also nice to have a turn one play that can trade into Phantom in space. So that's there. Uh, the cruiser when defeated creates a battle droid token so it's kind of sticky to help again hopefully turn on your uh coordinate for commander cody uh also in the two drop slot we have the um series officer uh, so this is the two cost two one separatist that when defeated you can deal two damage to a base uh, again the theme is get incidental get chip damage on the base if you can't overwhelm do it through when defeated uh, three drop slots, we have Cobb Vanth. Uh, because we have 12 total units that he can search for, and because he's not too shabby himself, he's a, a good include, but also, again, as you start thinking about keeping enough units on the board to have coordinate active, mm -hmm. any unit that replaces itself, like the previous Confederate courier, in this case Cobb Vanth, is, uh, I think, something that comes at a premium. So we're going to include him. Uh, we have the droid commando so this is only a, a two of because we don't have a high separatist count but it's not a non-zero separatist count uh this is a three cost four three and if you have another separatist unit when you play it it just gets ambush on its own so trying to find units that you can play without using your ecl or your timely intervention and still get that ambush value and hopefully ambush plus overwhelm once uh commander cody's on the board uh also, in the three slots, we have the newly revealed uh, Confederate uh, TIE Fighter, I believe. Or Tri-Fighter, tri sorry. Tri-Fighter, yeah. I, I fighter. love that yep, card. the three. Yeah. Uh, can't heal bases. Turns out that's pretty important when you're trying to be an aggressive deck. Uh, also, the B1 attack platform. So this is just a vanilla three cost five two. But when you pair it with Ambush, it actually becomes a, a very efficient removal card. And if you pair it with Overwhelm, it becomes a lot of extra damage. And when you have both of those potentially active, it is actually pretty fantastic. Well, it's one of those things. Um, if you ECL it while Clone Commander Cody is out, you're doing six damage or something like that can take out like a ray, you know? Yeah. Or uh, you could get rid of a Battle Droid token and deal five direct damage to the base that your opponent yep. was not expecting, right? Pretty That's true. the real key here is when you're ambushing with Overwhelm, your opponent has to start respecting their base health a lot sooner in the game. Um, next up, uh, four drop slot, we had Heavy. Uh, again, this was a recently revealed card, uh, four cost four, four, but it also has the coordinate of Raid 2. And since we're also already playing into coordinate with Commander Cody, that's not too big of a deal um six four when when attacking again when you're trying to ambush or overwhelm is pretty important and then a relevant when defeated of helping you know deal with the ground if you will you want to get mm -hmm. control of the ground with this deck um because we're villainy three copies of overwhelming barrage uh, in part because the card is still bonkers even as we enter set three but also because uh, we're an overwhelmed deck, so we got to run overwhelming barrage, right? Yeah. Like that's just that's a requirement. It'd feel wrong if you didn't run it. Yeah, feels wrong. Um, and then kind of like rounding out the the top end. Obviously, we have our three copies of Clone Commander Cody because that's our our deck building constraints here. That's our priority. Um, also, I was including Kraken. So Kraken is an interesting inclusion because. It doesn't have a lot of attack power the way a lot of these other units do, but this is helping to turn on your coordinate and be sticky about it. So the when played of creating two battle droid tokens is relevant and on attack that's also potentially relevant. I felt like this was uh, something worth at a minimum exploring. Uh, again, also has that separatist tag, so turns on things like droid commando. Um, Kind of thinking ahead, this is something that I could see becoming a different card, but I, I do think that it would warrant exploring. Um, we're also playing Darth Maul as our leader, so naturally we're going to run the Darth Maul unit, the 5 cost 5-6. Five, 
Uh, when I started thinking about pairing Ambush and Overwhelm together, and then I got to this unit, I was like, oh man, are you telling me that I can ambush two droid tokens with Darth <laughs> Maul and deal eight damage to their base as a result? It is crazy to think about. That, that is ECL wild. Darth Maul. Yeah, the Darth Absolutely Maul unit. Absolutely wild. So I got so giddy when I started thinking about that as a, as a potential use case. Oh man, mm -hmm. I'm so excited for that unit. Uh <laughs> Also wanted to, uh, again, much like Kraken, I kind of wanted to include this because this is a card that I'm interested in testing. Uh, Kit Fisto. So recently revealed six cost seven, six, but it has Saboteur and with Coordinate Active on attack can also deal damage to a ground unit. So even if you don't have the Overwhelm, this could be a very crucial two for one play off of ECL because six is the cutoff point. Mm -hmm. uh, that's, again, very relevant. Saboteur is also a really solid keyword when you're trying to be aggressive for going around stuff. Uh, this is a card that could become something else in future iterations of the list, but whenever you get a new set, sometimes I kind of like to throw everything at the wall and then see what works and what doesn't. You got to do some experimentation, uh, of course. Oh, of course. Uh, and then the last card uh, was just the other Maul, because again, uh, it's a Cody deck, but it's also a Maul deck, and we want Ambush, we want Overwhelm. He's got him baked in. He's just a good finisher slash, you know, big top-end removal card, and so that was the main deck. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't me, have yeah. to put it up if you don't want to, but the sideboard is pretty that. straightforward. Uh, this, this is the kind of deck that obviously is going to, I think, perform better, when your opponent is playing units for you to ambush or playing units for you to overwhelm them. So in situations where they're playing less units, uh, usually those are like double blue decks or you know slower control decks, mm -hmm. you have to have an alternative game plan because I think yours was going to fail. So I was like, all right, well, um, I'm, playing, I'm playing green and red together. So what do you do in that case? You just bring in all of your ramp cards uh, you bring in crate dragons, and then you had one slot left, so I went with another unit that had overwhelm and a, and a relevant on <laughs> uh, played ability. So um, three resupply, three super laser technician, three crate dragon, and then one good old Emperor Palpatine. Um, again, that's something that after testing you can change around. But the the idea was, all right, what is the you know obvious shortcoming of this deck well it would be decks that aren't playing a lot of units for me to to use all my cool keywords on so well, then we just ramp yep yeah i think that's a good uh a good sideboard because you kind of have to you can play maul as sort of like this uh mid-rangey sort of leader too where it's like if you need mm -hmm. to fight for control the board and eventually play those big drops at the end the great dragon the emperor you know you'll still be doing some chip damage or over with overwhelm here and there he might end up operating best as that but i like uh I like the idea of this list. It's it's fun, and I think it's important to show too that like yeah, Cody can go in, uh, go in a lot of lists. He can go. He's again not locked to vigilance or heroism, so you can be a little bit more flexible with him. It's neat. I like this list. You know what? I'm excited to hear about your list because I, <laughs> I think this is also a great use of Commander Cody. I I went a little bit uh, maybe a little bit stranger with uh, with with my list. Uh, I was thinking Maul too. Like Maul's a, a great idea, but I wanted to really I like to build kind of more thematic decks too. So this is my deck. I think I'm a clone now. Uh, where it's I decided to go with Padme because I wanted to go you know again with like a new leader. And I've always loved command as an aspect. So like let's just do double command. And so how am I going to capitalize both on the theme of clones and things like that? The theme of we're going kind of the heroism route with this, obviously, and the theme of coordinate too, specifically. So I did take a big risk. I rolled the dice and went with the droid manufactory because even though it's only 24 HP, you do get those two battle droid tokens when your leader flips. So with a leader like Padme, that means she has coordinate online right when she flips. You can do the searching. And that was another part of it too, where I'm running a lot of cards in this deck that will buff and enable other cards. So using Padme's ability to go through my deck quickly and find what I need at, the, at a given moment, I think the idea of that sounds very cool to me. So that's uh that's the plan here at least. But let's uh let's zoom in and take a look at the the list itself here. Oh, I just uh, shrunk yours again. There we go. And now we'll zoom in. And uh, mine, uh, I decided to go with. Uh, I'm just gonna cut Cl Clone Commander Cody off at the bottom here. We've got 
more rows than usual with these decks. But I decided to go with kind of like, a, if you're familiar with, with Magic the Gathering something, kind of like a white weenie sort of style where you play mm -hmm. a lot of small stuff that kind of buffs each other and capitalizes on each other being there. And so I think that plays really well into the coordinate idea too. And so you got to put Maz Kanata in there. She's not Republic. She's not searchable, right? But she's one of the best one drops for a deck like this because she's just going to keep getting bigger via the experience tokens from playing other units. You got to run three of the uh, 330 second stalwart. That as coordinate gets plus one, plus one. So again, you know, theoretically the second turn you have that online, it becomes a two, three. You're enabling other coordinate. Echo is a big one as well, where he becomes a four, four when you have coordinate online. And then uh, because we're playing things a little bit more aggressively, we've got stuff like Republic Tactical Officer, which is kind of like the Fleet Lieutenant for Republic, right? You can attack with a Republic unit, gets plus two, plus zero for this attack. So like, you know, sl slightly weaker body, but uh, still that good effect of playing a card and then getting to cheat in action in terms of getting to attack with a card. Um, you know, again, when you play that and it enables coordinate, there's all sorts of stuff. Coruscant Guard, just a good 3-2 vanilla drop to drop uh, on your first turn. But if you do have coordinate, the ambush might come in handy too. And then, uh, of course, we're playing clones, so I got to include one of the clone wars here because even though it's one of those things where you pay two and then you have to pay more resources to get more stuff and you're giving them battle droids, you know, if you think about it, they have to trade two of their battle droids into one of your clones and you're going to have an equal amount of clones and battle droids, right? So you're still going to come out ahead um, trade and numbers wise. And I'm thinking late game, if you just need a bunch of stuff to buff, you can just put bodies out there and then start giving them the, uh, you know, the plus whatever, plus whatever, because that's what command does well, right? Um, going to the second row, capitalizing on the fact that hopefully we'll have a lot of units on the board. We've got Admiral Akbar, which can come in and just nuke something when you have like four or five units out there. A little bit of restore is nice. Um, and then one of the most important cards in the deck, Attack Pattern Delta. We do get to play it for three because it's double command. And so getting 6-6 six, six of stats for 3 is extremely good in this deck and suddenly makes your small guys that you played in the first couple turns that your opponent felt like they could ignore, they suddenly become very, very scary. Um, we've got Cobb Vanth, of course, because in this deck he can bring a lot of those things back. And instead of bringing back, you know, usually your 2 drops before this set are okay, right? But now you're bringing back stuff that enables other things, so it becomes much better. Um, I like Admiral Yularen. It just gives your uh, stuff a little bit more staying power with the plus one health. Uh, that just makes sure you get to keep coordinate online. Things like manufactured sh manufactured soldiers. You can make uh, two clone trooper tokens, get a couple two twos, or honestly, you can make three battle droid tokens too. I mean, that those can be buffed just as easily as anything else here. You know, you don't get the Republic stuff, but if you feel like you need the bodies, you can even go that route. That's another double command aspect card that we can take advantage of in this deck. Um, Bright Hope is, I think, an auto include in a deck like this because being able to bounce things like Republic Tactical Officer, get those free attacks more than once, um, I think is going to be useful. Same with like Admiral Akbar, bouncing him and then playing him again to nuke something else with his when played is big. Um, of course, we've got to run... Three command, it is a command deck. Uh, get to play that for four, which is nice. You get the, a little bit of ramp with the resources, but it's more about putting experience tokens on something. Uh, maybe using one of your units to do power to a non-unique unit. That's one thing with this card. I really wish it just would have been unit and not non-unique unit, but it is what it is. It's still not too bad. Um, and then also just being able to return a unit from your discard pile to your hand. Once in a while, that's actually a really strong ability. When you do need it, it feels so good, right? But just the ramp and the XP is probably what you're going to use it for most times. It's, it's a good card. Then we've got uh, some of the exciting uh, synergy cards from this set coming up. We've got Shock T, who of course is going to be crucial in this deck. Uh, made me maybe want to run ECL, but again, I wanted to focus on coordinate over uh, ambush because a lot of this other stuff you don't really want to ambush in. You know, you want to be there and then get buffed. But Shock T, I mean, like giving all your friendly token units plus one plus one, you're going to be making a good amount of clones with this deck probably. And then on attack, creating another clone trooper token. So she's kind of your token generator and your token buffer as well. Um, and then a set one card that I'm very excited to have a good reason to run is a uh, General Krell. When you're playing a lot of cheap stuff, uh, that stuff is going to probably die very quickly. And so playing General Krell suddenly makes your opponent think twice about just trading into some of your weak stuff because you're going to draw a card every single time they do that. You're going to be replenishing your hand and then be able to flood the board again in a later turn. So General Krell uh, gives this deck theoretically some good late game uh, stretch, right? 
uh, because this game obviously can uh, this deck obviously could run out of steam very quickly so we've got a couple things in here to try to extend our value a little bit so general krell's in there for that uh captain rex you just play him you get eight eight of stats for six so you just got good numbers there you get coordinate online as well and then into our super late game, we've got Tranquility, uh, which is great because you can grab a Republic unit like Clone Commander Cody out of your discard pile and bring him back. Uh, and then on attack, you uh, give your next three Republic units uh, in the phase minus one cost. So again, it's all about refilling your hand and flooding the board again, which is good. But kind of the, the big uh, finisher, I would say, or like maybe even honestly, uh, something that could come out very quickly is Gore in this deck. Uh, you're you're not really going to be super concerned about taking out some of your tokens, even if they may be a little bit buffed at the time, in exchange for a 7-7 that's coming in to uh, ambush and overwhelm, and it has Sentinel, right? So running two gore, I think, in here is perfectly reasonable because you're you know probably going to have a lot of opportunities where you can, you can run them. I mean, if you think about it this way, right, you get to like your resource turn eight, you can uh, play uh, something like, or, you know, you get higher up, maybe not eight, but like, you play something like Manufactured Soldiers, and then suddenly you can play Gore for three and get rid of your three Battle Droid tokens, you know? That's a good reason to maybe do that. So, uh, yeah, I think Gore fits into this deck pretty well. Obviously, at the bottom, we've got uh, Clone Commander Cody again, buffing everything, giving it Overwhelm, just kind of capitalizing on the power of lots of bodies, but not too strong, you know? You're trying to overwhelm your opponent with uh, a number of attacks rather than, like, singular big hits. Don't expect to have the initiative a lot with this deck, but uh, it shouldn't matter too much. Obviously, you're vulnerable to board clears. But again, this is meant to be a very low to the ground, flood the board, uh, overwhelm your opponent uh, in a more figurative sense and literal sense uh, with this. Although when Cody comes online, you get it in the literal sense as well. So, you know, I can't say this is going to be a tier one deck, but I think it's going to be a really fun way to uh, to use the use the uh, use our reveal card clone commander cody and take advantage of a lot of the clone stuff in general that we're going to see in this set uh let me uh take a look at the sideboard really quick here um again padme is in there i think the the uh, ability that padme has is, is pretty great she comes out on five and so she can do something like search for uh captain rex you know to play on turn six or you know if you don't have your cody yet in your hand she can flip and then search for cody and then you could play cody on turn five so I think she her leader ability actually fits in really well with this. Um, so I anticipate using her to be pretty fun in this deck. And then uh, sideboard-wise, I kind of did the same thing you did, Charmer, where I, I geared my sideboard more towards sort of the uh, the games where I'm going to have to play a little bit more late, right? So we've got a couple home ones in there. We've got a couple U-Wing reinforcements. We've got a couple Spark of Hope because it's like, all right, if I'm not going to win the early game, I'm going to turn my dying units into ramp. So that's the idea there. And then choose sides. Obviously, in a deck like this, that could be pretty strong when you're saying, hey, I'll give you my clone uh, token for your Luke Skywalker or something like that, you know, or your crate Dragon, you know. So uh, you could do uh, some fun stuff with that. But again, just kind of using the uh, sideboard to shore us up in those uh, longer, uh, later game matches. But that's the idea. And, and uh, yeah, again, like, I think it's just super fun that... We've got Clone Commander Cody, and you can go such different directions with him. I think it shows just how, like, incredibly versatile this card is going to be. And I'm still shocked that he's an uncommon. That I was know, the right? the first thing that I said to you when you showed me the image, I went, he's an uncommon? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's Oh, crazy. man, card is, card is so good. I love that in your list, you threw in that one copy of the Clone Wars, and I know that it was probably you just you know, trying to be thematic and whatever, but there's so much good synergy with that because of your clone commander. Yeah, totally. Because, again, your tokens are now, there's, you know, three droids dying to one trooper. Mm -hmm. And if yours attack the droids, then you also get that splash damage. But also, because of the inclusions of cards like Shock T, which also is going to extend your health and make those trades more clunky for your opponent, and with cards like General Krell, where, you know, your hand might just be, you know, completely uh, attritioned out, right? Mm -hmm. You're, you got no cards. And then suddenly you top deck late game General Krell and the Clone Wars. And you're like, all right, I'm going to make five tokens and then drop the General. And now, like, if you don't kill the General first, I'm going to draw a whole bunch more cards and reload. I just, I absolutely love that. Yeah, it's uh, I I I know this kind of deck by nature is uh, is vulnerable to things like board wipes and board clears and stuff, and it runs out of steam fast. But 
I got kind of excited building it because I'm like, you know, we actually have a good amount of tools to get back into it once the board is cleared. And yeah, the Clone Wars, it's just a one up for now. It's still an expensive card to play. So like you said, you need to have something out already to really benefit from it. Um, but I don't know. It's it's interesting if you play it on like resource turn seven or eight. Like if you think about playing it on eight, you get six clone tokens. That's 12 damage, yeah. right? If you get to attack with them, that's that's no that's no small or amount of damage. Or even if you're on like eight, but you only uh, pay seven into it and you save your last for your leader. So that's the mm -hmm. other thing I wanted to highlight. Padme plays so well into this list because, yes, you are vulnerable to yeah. wipes and, and things like that. But when you can just continue to add to your hand and it's not just draw a card, it's selectively add to your hand. I think that goes right. a long way as well. Yeah, I mean, late game, uh, you know, you have a couple of tokens out and then you're not going to feel bad at all paying one to go search for something, you know. And most of the deck is searchable, right? Not everything is Republic. Um, and sure, there's things like, you know, I'm sure some people are going to be like, well, why don't you include Battlefield Marine? Uh, it's a two for three, three. And I, I think you could totally put that card in here. It's still something that would be buffed by Clone Commander Cody. Um, but I wanted to, you know, again, make it a little bit more thematic, the first iteration, and see where to go from here. But uh, I, I love the idea that green can sort of be this sort of like weenie style uh, aspect too, where you can play a lot of cheap stuff and just buff it. That's that's an interesting kind of, I think, theme that's emerging with Command that didn't really show itself as much in the first couple sets. But now in set three, the pieces are starting to come together where it's like, you know, double Command can maybe turn into a pretty pretty aggressive, uh, you know, style to play a deck in. So it's neat to, it's neat to think about for sure maybe we play this uh you know instead with something like uh boba fett heroism right from set two because yeah. then you're playing all the buffing a lot of the stuff has keywords already in it and then you just kind of double down on that you maybe swap a few things out for more things with keywords there's some more clones that have that so but i like the idea to uh, the idea of searching right if i want my clone commander cody i want it right now if i want my um you know commander rex i want it right now and it makes sense to put rex and cody in the same deck together come on of course. Oh, for sure. Yeah. So there you have I, it. Oh, go ahead. I, I I was just gonna say I like that you called out that the kind of swarm strategy is emerging. So like we got teasers in in set one. Obviously, mm -hmm. we had Leia and Tarkin, which are yeah. gonna benefit from playing a bunch of bodies, but we didn't have all of the tools. Um, I think the real signpost that that theme was gonna continue was actually uh, Moff Gideon. Uh, Moff mm -hmm. Gideon was the other leader I was considering building to kind of use clone com clone commander Cody as like the example, right? Because Absolutely. I was like, man, Moff Gideon is one of those leaders where if you're making a bunch of tokens, but once per turn, you can have them trade up with something with mm -hmm. his ability. And then again, also much like clone commander Cody, he's providing overwhelm Moff when he is flipped, right? When the leader's deployed can also provide overwhelm to all of your tokens as well. That's another thing to kind of consider and explore. So uh, I, I just really like that, as you said, he's so versatile and I think that he's got a lot of potential decks that he could end up in. Yeah, definitely. Another one I was really looking at was running something with uh, vigilance as well, because, uh, you know, running maybe like a command vigilance, since uh, right now Vigilance has a lot of um, coordinate stuff too and has a lot of clone token uh, generation from what we've seen. The Outspoken Representative, you've got the Wartime Trade Official on the other side creating Battle Droid tokens. And, you know, again, Cody operated on both sides lore-wise, so he kind of affects both sides equally, which is great. It's such a versatile card. But yeah, I think Vigilance is another great uh, aspect to pair him with as well. And that takes me back to, you know, like... Maybe Dooku or something like that. Maybe that wouldn't be a bad way to uh, to run him either. Or uh, Grievous, honestly, you know, because Grievous is more droid based. But you just throw a, a clone commander Cody in there, and you go uh, cunning, uh, cunning command, and maybe you got some fun, uh, super powerful uh, battle droid stuff. So I don't know. This is I. This is like we've revealed like a lot of a lot of Ice Cave Radio has gotten to reveal a lot of good cards over over the sets for Star Wars Unlimited. Uh, you guys did Super Laser Blast, or not Super Laser Blast, or uh, Super Laser Technician, technician yeah. Super Laser Technician before I joined. Uh, then we revealed, what else was it? It was Chopper and uh, Power of the Dark Side was mm -hmm. uh, a couple of them. And then uh, uh, Bounty Guild Initiate and uh, the other Bounty Hunter event, which is escaping my... But anyway, 
This is probably uh, the favorite. Headhunting. headhunting, right. I think this, though, is my favorite card that we've gotten to reveal yet. Uh, it's it's such a cool character. I love the Phase 2 Clone Trooper armor as well, where it's sort of bridging that gap between the Clone Trooper and the Storm Trooper styles for armor. I've always thought that was such a neat middle ground design-wise in the universe. And then, uh, you know, I don't know. Commander Cody, it's like, uh, that goes back, to, that is a straight throwback to some of the, like, 19, like, mid-century uh, serialized, you know, kind of adventure stories and stuff that you would get back yeah. then. So, yeah, it's just a cool character. Uh, really awesome card in Star Wars Unlimited. Like, I, I again, I can't believe it's an uncommon. This is a, a rare, but I feel like in Twilight, uh, we've got a lot of rare quality uncommons, it feels like. Or the quality of uncommons is kind of, like, jumped. Uh, yeah, it... It certainly feels like I think the last couple of sets, the quality of uncommons have jumped mm -hmm. because I remember for shadows when I saw, you know, IG, for example, IG 11, I was like, man, that's an uncommon. That's like a, a five drop six, five with a relevant when defeated and other text. Yeah. Um, not, not to say that set one didn't have good uncommons. It absolutely did. It's just, for I sure. think perhaps for me, the biggest problem was set one had what i think are like two staple for the rest of the game uncommons and then when you have benchmarks that high it's kind of like well there's takedown and overwhelming barrage and then there's everything else you know um the the quality the general quality i think has been rising by set to kind of even out that disparity yeah for sure and well, uh, there you have it. That's uh, I don't know if there's a whole lot more to add. I mean, uh, we've uh, we talked about Cody. Hopefully, you're excited to throw him in some decks. Uh, that's only I think just the tip of the iceberg in terms of what uh, clone commander Cody can be used in in uh, Star Wars Unlimited. I think it's going to be uh, it's going to go down as as one of the better cards I think to come out in the set for sure. So I'm I'm hyped. And this is another card too, where he will just keep coming back, right? Because he's not locked yeah. to any sort of any sort of uh, trait, right? Uh, he buffs everything on your side. This is a card that, you know, if you're playing something that goes kind of wide, um, is just going to be a bomb uh, when it comes down just by virtue of giving it Overwhelm, I think, specifically. Like, the plus one, plus one is nice, but the plus one, plus one in Overwhelm is very, very scary. It's like, And you want to fill your deck with cards that require an immediate answer or else, and this is one of those cards, you know? Yeah. I also am still, like, absolutely blown away that it's just each friendly unit and yeah. not even just the trait part being missing because like i said i did misread it the first time and i thought it was each friendly like clone just because mm -hmm. i was skimming and my brain naturally filled it in like of course it's got to be every friendly he's clone, the clone right? commander yeah um <laughs> but then like the other thing that doesn't you know sit in right away is that it's not each friendly ground unit it's literally each friendly unit mm -hmm. so if you have situations because we've all played those games where like one player draws their space units and the other one doesn't and now you've got you know even just one or two space units out there that are uncontested not only are they turning on your coordinate easier for you just by a merit of staying alive but now they're also getting the buff yeah. from cody so uh the fact that it is all your friendly units is such a big deal with this card it is, yeah. So look forward to pulling it in limited because this is going to be a ridiculously strong card in limited uh, definitely think about playing command, I think. And, uh, and yeah, I mean, there's, it's just a great card. I'm hyped to get to do another reveal for the game. Thanks to, uh, thanks to Xander over at fantasy flight for sending this one over to us. And, uh, yeah, hopefully everybody else enjoys it too there. And I think, I guess on that note, that's kind of, that's kind of the episode, right? Short and sweet today. I Only think, about 45 I think so. minutes. Yeah. I say short, well, but that was still about 45 minutes. That's yeah. yeah, it was about 45 minutes. And it, let's be honest, it was action-packed, right? We it revealed was. a new card. We went through two deck lists with uh, hypotheticals from cards that haven't even been released yet. I yeah. think uh, this I was think a value episode. Value right. episode, yeah. High value episode, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, on that note, too, uh, just to catch people up to uh, Conquer the Cave is a little bit delayed. I've been doing some traveling. I was in Dallas last week and going to be a Tahoe next weekend as this is recorded. Uh, we'll get back to that as soon as I am back in my uh, office for more than two days during a week. And uh, we'll get that back rolling again. Uh, the fourth match is uh, scheduled. It is being played right now. And uh, we'll have that for you as uh, soon as we can. So if you're a Conquer the Cave fan, don't worry. It's coming back real soon. Uh, aside from that, any any other things to uh, catch people up on before we close it out? 
I I don't have anything other than uh what's that something coming in from my mm -hmm. my droid friend here oh okay I, yeah I can I can pass that along um may the force be with you <laughs> <laughs>